All right, buenos dias, mis amigos. Okay, so uh, I noticed uh, five, about five, six days ago, there's a video by KJV Bible Scope, and about uh, three days ago, three, four days ago, uh, Wretched puts out a video in, on the same subject. All right, and I want to go over this subject, and look, I get it. I take a very unpopular view on this subject and um to me it, it's just a matter of the word of god being more important than the words of men the truth no matter how hard it is is more important than feelings all right, so the subject matter is about, you know, do babies go to heaven? Do babies who die go to heaven? This is a very sensitive topic, and understandably so. It's very painful to lose a child. I get that. And it feels good when somebody says, your child that has died is going to heaven feels good but it's not true and I want to cover that so that you might know and understand the Word of God and I reckon I better start let me let me start with this let me start with um, Oh, I can't remember the verse. Let's see if I can remember. Oh, I... Hold on a second. No. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Yeah, there it is. Proverbs 14, verse 12. There is a way which seems right unto a man. But the end thereof are the ways of death. That's a perfect verse for what I'm about to talk about. It seems right, you know, babies, they're innocent. They should go to heaven. It seems right unto man. But the end thereof are the ways of death. I'm going to show you that this teaching is extremely wicked. Alright, if you give me the opportunity, I will present that to you. And obviously, it is for you to decide, essentially, do you trust the Word of God? Do you trust the Lord Jesus Christ, or do you trust, uh, trust uh, you know, Brother Ed and, and Todd Friel and, and others? Okay, so let's get into this. In the KJV Bible Scope video, he starts off in Romans 5, verse 13. So let's get into... A little bit of what that says and uh, I might read a verse or two here uh, for unto I'm sorry for until the laws sin was in the world but sin is not imputed when there is no law nevertheless death reigned from Adam to Moses even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come, but not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God, and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, has abounded unto many. Alright, so 
I'm going to stop there. Now, the idea that's being presented is that, well, babies have never sinned. Therefore, they go to heaven. Now, uh, there's no truth into that at all, but that's the idea that is being presented. So, let's first go to... Um, Matthew 19, if I remember correctly, if I remember correctly, in Matthew 19, uh, there's a young man that comes, approaches Jesus, and he says, Good Master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why? callest thou me good there is none good but one that is god but if thou wilt enter into life keep the commandments he saith unto him which jesus said thou shalt do no murder thou shalt not commit adultery thou shalt not steal thou shalt not bear false witness honor thy father and thy mother and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself the young man said unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell all that thou hast, all that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Alright, so consider this that according to the young man he had never sinned his entire life now Jesus could have easily rebuked him and said yeah you have to sin but no he simply states that hey that's not enough <laughs> I mean really nobody is perfect Nobody is perfect, and the, the scripture is very clear on that, and the law reveals that. Romans 3, verse 23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All. All have sinned. So, This young man, pretending, posing himself as being perfect, and have, having never sinned, that wasn't enough. That was not enough. According to Jesus, if that was enough, then Jesus would have said, good job, buddy. But that was not enough. Alright. And the, uh, the other implication is that, hey, you don't need a Savior if you're perfect. Alright. Now, nowhere in Romans 5 does it suggest that babies go to heaven. It's not there. All right. the, what these people try to do is they try to use this to imply that, well, babies don't have sin. That's not what the Bible says. Alright. Now let's go to Todd Friel and Todd, or uh, I'm sorry, Wretched, uh, which is Todd Friel. He goes to uh, Second Kings. Oh, um, I forget the verse. Here, we'll find it. No worries. We're gonna find the verse. He quotes it, but I, I don't know that he. 
it says it exactly. Right there. Okay, so if I were to play the video for you, he quotes this verse. And he suggests, because this verse says, is it well with the child? And then he goes into this idea that, why would that be there? Is well with the, here, maybe I better play a clip. Is well with the child. If God has taken away your child in infant days, and you never heard its declaration of faith because it wasn't capable, the child didn't get baptized, they never made a profession of faith. Nevertheless, you may rest assured that it is well with the child, well in a higher and better sense than it is well with yourselves, well without the... Okay, I'm going to stop it right there. The, the implication, or what he's, you know, what he's implying is that this verse is supportive of the idea that all babies go to heaven. Because of this. Is it well with the child? All right. Now, in order to make that argument, you have to say also, all husbands go to heaven. If you're going to use this phrase as an argument, I don't, you know, I don't know if, if anybody's, you know, Heard the argument from Spurgeon or Friel or whoever. It sounds great, man. It does. It sounds great. But it's not true. It's not true. Let's see where we at here. What was that verse I had pulled up earlier? There is a way which seems right unto man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Alright, so I just wanted to cover those two points. Alright, now let's get into this. Okay? And I want to go to Daniel chapter 12. Alright, because people do wonder, well, what happens to the child? Do they get thrown into the fiery pits of hell? Well, that seems cruel. They didn't have a chance to reject the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, it seems odd, doesn't it? Well, you know, I, I'm not of that opinion at all. In Daniel chapter 12, verse 2, it says, Many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Now, I think this is where it's helpful to believe every word of God. To believe that every word here is not from Daniel. It's not from a translator. It's not from another language. It's directly from God above. I think it helps. Because we notice. It says many. Of them that sleep. shall awake. Many. So let's say you've got a million people that are asleep. And many of them that are sleeping will awake. How many people will awake? A lot. But not all. Right? Now, consider this. It says, Some to everlasting life, and the rest, no. 
It doesn't say in the rest. And some to shame and everlasting contempt. All right. So the way I see this is some awake to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt of the many that sleep in the dust of the earth. And what this implies to me is that not everybody that dies will awake. In other words, not everybody's going to get saved. And of those that aren't saved, not all of them are going to be, um, you know, uh, how do I say this? Um, not They're not all going to stand before God and be punished. Uh, that's the only way I know how to say that. Okay? Many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to shame and everlasting contempt. So of the wicked, they will stand before God, and they will it will be made known to them their punishment. But not everybody is going to be woken up at the end of the world when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and we are made to stand before God. All right, so now let me go to John chapter three and deal with this there was a man of the pharisees named nicodemus a ruler of the jews the same came to jesus by night and said unto him rabbi we know that thou art a teacher come from god for no man can do these miracles that thou dost except god be with him Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, <laughs> that's, you know, it, it's amazing. It's amazing because I wonder, you know, in the conversations I've had this week, with a few people, have they ever read the first chapter? I mean, this covers a lot of subjects. The very first chapter of the book of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All Things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lights every man that comes into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not, but as but as many as received him to them gave he power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name 
which were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God, which were born of God. John chapter 3 Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus, Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. Very clear. It's very clear that we must be born again. All right. Very clear. Very clear. We must be born again. We must be born of the Spirit. That which is flesh is flesh. And that which is Spirit is Spirit. And except a man be born of water, which is being born of your mother's womb, and of the Spirit, which is from God above, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Except a man be born, he cannot see. And look, I'm sorry, except a man be born Again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So, babies are born of the flesh. But until they are born of the Spirit, they cannot see the kingdom of God. And that's why I go back to Daniel 12. Many, it doesn't say in all that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. I think it's only fair. I, th I think it's only right. Now, consider this. Alright, consider this. What does Jesus say about children? And let me see if I can remember. Suffer little children. That's the phrase. Right? Suffer little children. Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not. For of such is the kingdom of God. Suffer little children to come unto me, and forbid them not. For of such is the kingdom of God. Suffer little children, and forbid them not to come unto me. For of such is the kingdom of heaven. All right, so uh, real quickly, uh, I've seen these. Excuse me for uh, for my harshness here, but I've seen morons, morons, people with extremely low in intellect, 
like me, say that there's a difference between the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. There's not. Okay. All right, moving on. So Jesus here is teaching us to take care of our children, to watch after them, and to suffer them. All right, because they are not as advanced as we are, still ought we to suffer them and to teach them and to guide them. We have a responsibility to the children, to our children and to our neighbor's children, to watch after them. And to guide them, and to teach them, and to preach the gospel unto them, and forbid them not. We have the responsibility to raise them so that they might have the opportunity that we have to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, to be born of the Spirit of God, and to have eternal life. We have that responsibility to raise our children so that they might have the opportunity that we have had. That's important. Okay? It's important to be very mindful of the children and to be very responsible and to be very careful and to forbid them not. Preach the gospel unto them. Teach them the ways of God. It's our responsibility to raise them. The responsibility is ours. All right? Now, we must be born again. So also must our children be born again. What applies for us applies to them also. Now, contrast that with what Todd Friel and Brother Ed are teaching. All right, and consider this. Now, what they teach is a way that seems right unto man. But the end thereof are the ways of death. So, what sounds nice, there's another side to this. And that is, when you teach that all babies go to heaven, what you're suggesting, however you want to describe it, whether you want to... Um, you know, uh, say subconsciously, you're suggesting that you should kill your child. You should kill your baby. You should kill, kill, kill your child. To save them. To save them from the possibility of going to hell. Now I get it. You know, don't want to don't don't bring that up to me. Oh, I mean, well, you don't want me to bring that up because that destroys your doctrine of deceit. 
that destroys your doctrine. I want all babies go to heaven. Don't bring up the idea. Don't bring that idea up. I don't want to hear it. Well, you're ignoring the truth, the reality, and quite frankly, you're ignoring your own conscious. You really are. Because what you're teaching is that your child has everlasting life until they lose the their eternal security they go from being saved to being unsaved and then apparently they have to get saved again in John chapter 3, Jesus does not say, ye must be saved again. He says, you must be born again. Not saved again. Born again. All right, so knowing this, you should now know that you do not have an excuse to kill your child. You go to the Ten Commandments in Exodus 20, verse 13. Thou shall not kill. Meanwhile, these evil men and seducers are teaching people to kill their children. That's what I see. Whether it's Brother Ed, Todd Friel or whoever, you're teaching to kill children. And, and that's I mean that's bad enough, but then you're also teaching that people can lose their salvation. That's arguably worse. That's arguably worse than killing babies. Is to teach this idea. I mean, it really is. It, in my opinion, it, it is worse. You know, kill a child. That's one thing. To teach people that they can lose their salvation, that's worse. Because what you're saying is, hey, Jesus Christ can't save anybody. All right, when you're killing babies, you're just you're killing off some people. When you say that that a person can lose their salvation, you're killing everybody. All right, as you know, it, killing babies, some you're just killing babies. Not everybody. To say that Jesus Christ can't save anybody, that's worse. You have to save yourself when you can't save yourself. That's worse. It really is. So when you're teaching, hey, these babies, they have, they're, they're saved. And then at some point, if you don't kill them soon enough, they, they're going to be unsaved. You would think there would be great importance on that particular subject if a baby could lose their salvation. If they could go from being saved to being unsaved, then God ought to, he ought to give us the, the exact time, the exact moment. If you don't kill your child by this point in time, that child's going to lose his salvation. That's an extremely important subject. 
There, it's not mentioned anywhere in the Bible at all. In fact, Jesus very plainly, very simply, says that we must be born of the Spirit. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the Spirit is Spirit. It's incredible how simple that is. In 2 Corinthians 11, verse 3, But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be, simpted, uh, should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. It's simple. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. And it's very simple. Okay, um, and that's that's my goal for today, to make this stuff very simple. We have a responsibility to raise our children, not kill them before they lose their salvation. That's wicked. It's wicked to teach that, and it's wicked to teach this idea that babies are saved, and then at some point they lose their salvation. That's wicked. That's evil. As all evil gets. And what you're doing is you're making it out to sound nice. It seems right by man, but it's not the ways of God, right? It's not the ways of God. My ways are not. Your ways. I think that's in the Bible somewhere. Uh, I thought, where, what is it? you got to look through 20. I can't remember. Where was that at? Oh, no, I don't remember. I don't remember. It's somewhere. There it is. Isaiah 55. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. Well, sure, if it was up to me, everybody would be saved. Not just babies, but everybody. But it's not up to me. God is just. God is right. God is the one that has made us all. He has given us our, His Word. And our responsibility is to preach the gospel to every creature. So that they might have the opportunity to be saved. Just as we have been given that opportunity to be saved. The responsibility is ours. All right. All right. And what you're doing, and I'll tell you another thing, you're taking advantage of people that are suffering, people that are hurting, people that are in pain, that have lost a child, and you're trying to give them false comfort You're taking advantage of people that hurt. And it's wrong. It's very wrong. There's a time to grieve. Now, I, <laughs> I better stop here. But if you read, uh, in my opinion, Ecclesiastes 3, I think, is, is a great chapter. There's a... Everything... To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born, and a time to die. A time to plant, and a time to pluck up that which is planted. Alright, a time to kill, and a time to heal. A time to break down, and a time to build up. A time to weep, and a time to laugh. A time to mourn, and a time to dance. Alright, so... There are, you know, there are things in life in which we must mourn. In Ecclesiastes 7, it says, Sorrow is better than laughter. 
There are times and things that we ought to mourn, that we ought to feel great sorrow for. Even God Almighty felt sorrow. Right? It, and it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. It grieved God, right? It grieved God in his heart that he had made man. There's a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. There is a season for all things. And if you lose your child, that's not a good thing. It's a bad thing. It's a sad thing. It's a hurtful thing. And you should grieve. And you should feel sorrow. It's the right thing. It's the only thing. It hurts. And I don't know if it even ever gets better. And that's life, man. Life is full of misery. It's another reason why we need a Savior. And that's why another reason why we have hope for a better world that is coming. Alright, so again, there is a way which seems right unto man, but the end thereof are the ways of death.